Hey, welcome back to Five Lakes Garage. And today what I wanna do is actually show you guys how to uh, replace the valve cover gaskets on your 2007 Honda Odyssey. The super sexy Honda Odyssey. Um, there are a couple different years. 2007 was the first year of this type of uh, <clears throat> model year. And there's some differences from the 2006, but most of them are pretty much the same. Now, a couple things I did I did uh, learn about this particular vehicle that halfway through that year, <clears throat> the intake is different. So make sure you have your VIN number when you go get your parts. Uh, that will definitely help you get the right ones the first time. Um, now I'm gonna go through some of the procedures here and some tips some tricks and that type of stuff. So go ahead and pay attention to that um, of how to change the valve cover gaskets. Now, the big problem with changing this is that you have to take so much stuff off. And also it's a front wheel drive van so the back half is going to be a big pain in the butt so be careful now a couple little quick safety things you will be having your valve covers off you will have your engine open to the elements which would be fine as long as you can pay attention to what you have around you as in don't put any nuts bolts you know most of the time you put it up here you put it over here just to store it out of the way don't do that uh, only because if a nut or bolt falls into your intake, you're done. You got to take it apart to get that out. If it falls into your valve cover, well, the valve head, excuse me, if it falls into the head, falls down the oil, oil gallery, you're done. You got to get that out. Um, so definitely be careful. Have a couple of clean rags available that you can put down on the intake uh, so that nothing falls into it. But if you do it slowly, and you do it right, everything will be great. Um, so anyway, so the first order of business is actually get everything off. Um, you have the front cover, uh, go ahead and pull that off. I went ahead and pulled the, uh, the front cover here off just to be able to get a little more access, but go ahead and start taking everything off. Um, organize everything on a bench so that you know exactly what goes where. Um, a lot of people just put all their nuts and bolts into a box and then you're picking them out. You're like, oh, well, I only got three of these, but I got four of those. And just lay them out. Have a table, lay out everything. Also, all your tools, make it a lot easier for yourself. If you use it for this project, put it on the table. Anything you don't use, like you grab, let's say a 14 millimeter. You grab, oh, I needed a 13. Okay, don't put it on the table, put the 14 back into the box, grab the 13 and then use it so that you only have the tools that you need out. So it kind of helps with the process. But anyway, um, I'm gonna go through and take everything off that we don't need, get everything out of the way. The wiring harnesses, uh, be very careful with the clips, especially with the ones that have a lot of miles on it, a lot of heat cycles. This one here has got a 220, 230,000 miles on it. it um, a lot of these clips are gonna be brittle. Uh, if you break the clip, you can order them, but you're gonna, you're gonna be splicing in wires and that type of stuff. And you don't wanna cause any more issues to your project than what you're trying to fix. So. We're going to get down into it. We're going to fix these oil leaks so that it doesn't stank every time you drive it because, of course, it leaks down from the oil cover, down through the transmission, down through everything else, hit the manifold, and then it stinks. Um, oil does burn. It's just start on fire. So it is a safety thing, too. So let's get into it. We're going to rip this thing apart, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to show you some other stuff. Actually, one more thing before you actually get started. Check out your parts and make sure that you you have everything you think you're gonna need. So I have two big boxes here. I have one for your intake. Uh, open that up. There are two separate sections. You got the upper intake and the lower intake. They do sell it in kits. Go ahead and get the whole kit so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so as far as the uh, valve cover gasket goes, you're gonna have grommets. So you should have a whole bag of these. Every bolt's gonna have a grommet on it. You should have two actual gaskets. So these right here are very pliable and they'll be able to fit around the gasket. And thank you manufacturers for getting away from cork. So anyway, um, each spark plug hole is going to have a gasket around there as well. You're going to have to get those out without damaging the, the valve cover. They are aluminum. You can gouge them up. Be very careful. Also, these guys here, we're going to have to press these guys in. Uh, they are rubber, but it should be really easy. Just use a socket with the proper size. Now, we should have six of these. Make sure you do have six in your box. All right, so go ahead and inspect your valve cover gaskets or your uh, intake cover. So you do have some small O-rings, which is awesome. That's your uh, PVC, uh, PCV valve. 
And it's also your um, your motor for the choke. It's kind of sort of like the choke. Uh, it's fuel injection, doesn't really have too much of that. But anyway, so you have your upper intake gasket. Fantastic, you have your other gasket. So now these guys are your lowers. There you go. So you have two of those. And well, actually you got a lot more than two. No, you have two. They're uh, metal. Um, they are, actually that's pretty good quality. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so it looks like I have everything I need, so let's get it torn down. Uh, because once you tear it down, that's it. You're stuck until you get all your parts in. All right, time to change the battery and start digging it. All right, here is an update. Uh, so you need to take all of your uh, coils off. Uh, when you do take them off, actually go through, look at the rubber, make sure it's not all uh, brittle or cracked or anything like that. That could actually cause a misfire. These actually look pretty well, uh, pretty good. All of the gaskets are still pliable, so we're going to still reuse these. So it is just a little Allen wrench. I believe that's a, probably a number six metric uh, to get those off. So you pull those off, pull them to the side. Okay, so we went all the way around the head. We're taking off any electrical out, uh, connections that we need. Uh, again, be careful with the clips because they do break. I haven't broken one yet. Knock on wood. Um, also, there are a bunch of hoses. Some of these are vacuum. Some of these are water lines. So they will leak a little bit. It happens. Uh, but also inspect them while you're in here. If they're hard, brittle, cracked, or whatever, uh, go ahead and replace them. Now is your chance. Uh, actually, really surprisingly, I'll give credit to Honda. A lot of these are actually in really good shape. Uh, I don't see any cracking. They're very pliable. Uh, so yeah, good job, Honda. I'll give you that. Um, now, I will not give you the credit that we have to take the intake off in order to get the valve covers off to do a very simple job that's turning into a big pain in the butt. Uh, air intake comes off. All your sensors and that type of stuff comes off. And we haven't even gotten to the other side of the engine yet. Or the backside. Yeah, we're going to keep going. Let's go. Okay, so we just took off the upper intake. Uh, once again, make sure everything is cleared off and nothing can fall in. Uh, looking down in the intake, that is nasty. Um, you know, I try to keep up on maintenance on this thing. Uh, we've had it, we didn't get it new, but it was new-ish. <clears throat> and I'm really surprised at how much trash is in there. Uh, we're definitely gonna try to clean that out as best as possible. Um, but we're gonna do it off the car. So we're not gonna do it actually in the car. But um, I don't think the gasket kit comes with the upper plenum here so that we won't be able to take this completely apart, but we'll be able to take it mostly apart to be able to get to it. All right, as you can see, that is not that clean in there. I'm a little concerned-ish about a lot of that because if it's in there, it's probably in your engine. Hmm. But hey, it's got 200 and some change thousand miles on it and it still runs pretty good at least it was before i took it apart we'll see if we can actually get it back together so anyway uh we're gonna go ahead and take the intake the rest of the way off i think i have all of the hoses and connections and everything like that off of the intake so that we should be able to pull that off um just be careful with pulling it off don't rip it and tear off any electrical lines because this is a modern engine and it needs a lot of electrical it's not quite as old as the the old wag over there but yeah it's it's pretty decent anyway um so yeah let's get those guys off and put them over to the side and maybe clean them up a little bit because that is nasty uh one thing also to take note of when you take the bolts out look at them and see if they're a different size if they're all the same size then you're good to go if they are different sizes lengths or whatever then you has to go back in the same way it came out one way of actually doing that is take a piece of cardboard draw out a picture of the intake and then drill holes wherever all the bolts are as you take them out put them in the cardboard okay? put them in the cardboard it kind of keeps track of everything and so we'll be able to get those and i'm gonna get my cardboard out draw a picture and start drilling some holes all right as you see i got a very crude drawing of my upper intake i'm going to take one of these at a time i'm going to pull them out put them in my cardboard Pull it out, pull in my cardboard. If I should lay this on top, it should be able to have everything match up. Now there are a couple of nuts in there, not bolts. Those is just to be able to line up the intake as you put it down. Um, I'll put that into the second video. But on this one, <clears throat> I'm gonna take it out one by one 
and put them on here. Now, taking this off seems that this is the intake and it is made of aluminum and you do not want to bend it. So what we're gonna do is actually break all of the bolts first. Uh, that will actually leave, relieve the pressure on the gasket and on the actual intake itself. So break them all first. Um, I like to start from the outside and work my way in uh, because when I put it back on, I wanna start from the middle and work my way out. Um, there are torque settings for that when we go on the putting back together, but we'll go over that later. So anyway, I'm gonna break them all, put them on my cardboard. Okay, the intake did come out. As you can see, I got all my bolts right where they came out. And actually they all turned out to be the same size except for the 10 millimeter. And you probably did not have to mess with the 10 millimeter. Um, so don't mess with those, just do the, and actually these are 12 millimeters to be able to get those off. Also keep an eye on your nuts. You have two nuts and the rest are bolts. Put that aside and you can be able to put them back on. Now we're taking those 10 millimeters off. Uh, Okay, so you look down into all of the intake runners. Um, this is actually really nasty. Um, I'm thinking this guy has been leaking for a while. I'm so really surprised it hasn't been smoking. So what I'm gonna do is I gotta put some, like a rag or something like there because you do not want anything to fall in there. Anything you do fall in there, you gotta take off or you have to take the actual lower intake off completely. Let's keep digging. Anyway, uh, so it definitely shows signs of it leaking. This is the bottom half, and you see how corroded and nasty that is. So it was definitely leaking. So it is definitely time to get this replaced. Also, the uh, little grommets that are around the spark plugs. Yeah, I can just rip them out with my fingers. So yeah, that definitely needed to be changed. Uh, so it's definitely a good idea to actually get this done. So, all right, so I have an exposed head. So I need to get this replaced, put this back on so that I can get to the backside and not drop anything in there. So let's do some more inspections to make sure we're good. I need to clean this up, replace all these. I'll show you how to do those and replace this gasket that is plasma pancake. But we're gonna get these replaced, put it back on and we're going to inspect the rest of it. So let's go. This is, why, this is the reason why you inspect it. It was actually part of the o-ring that was around the spark plugs and it was down in the valves not good all right as you can see we've kind of sort of cleaned it uh i really needed my parts washer actually up and running to actually really clean it but this should be good enough uh the way it is um so i got the old ones out and no they did not go gentle into that good night uh they were disgusting so I cleaned it out a little, little bit. Uh, try not to scar up inside of any of these or else it will leak. Um, I did get a little chip off of that one. I got a little too aggressive with trying to get the other one out. I was getting frustrated. And when you get frustrated, the good thing is to walk away. Um, also, so we're gonna put these guys in and what I'm using is a 30 millimeter socket. It actually fits over there pretty well. And when you wanna beat them in, use a soft mallet. I don't even wanna use the uh, brass. I want to go ahead and use the dead blow on the plastic side. So make sure it is flushed all the way around. We want to get it, make sure it's in there nice and flat. And then you can start the other ones. Now, when you put these in, there are two different ways of putting it this way or this way. This is the correct way. So it wants to go down straight like that. Now, Take a look at the ones that you take off and see how that they are oriented so you can put these in in the same way now Since I really do not want to go back into this thing again. I'm actually just going to lube it up a little bit To hopefully have it slide in now. I'm just using regular petroleum jelly uh, Once it warms up it actually blends right into the oil and then when you change the oil again it actually comes out and actually with the lubricant on there it actually goes in almost all the way not all the way but almost so that's why i take my socket and give it a, some persuasion and you can actually hear it when it actually bottoms out all right so i got all three of them in they are looking good so now i just have to make sure this is nice and clean now what i use to actually clean all this stuff up with is your basic scotch brite 
Now I would actually go into this groove, go all the way around, kind of already did that already. And then also just get the mating surfaces nice and clean. Okay, so once the head cover or the valve cover is actually nice and clean and ready to go on, you'll put your seal in, uh, in the groove. Um, it should be able to stay in there because it's kind of a tight fit. Make that uh, nice and uniform all the way around. Now, for the actual head itself, we still want to clean that off. Now, you definitely don't want to put a lot of stuff, dirt and that type of stuff in the engine. So try to grab it and push away. Just kind of go around in circles, pushing it away from the actual valves themselves. This is what I'm talking about. All right, so as you can see, all this stuff here needs to be clean. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to clean it off, but I'm pushing away from it. I'm not going in, I'm pushing away. Now, you're still going to get some stuff in there, but it's not going to be as bad. But you can see a scotch bright. Now you can see a scotch bright actually cleans it off pretty good. So try to keep as much stuff out of the engine as possible. So I'm gonna go all the way back around, get rid of all the dirt, all the grime, all the everything else, and then we can put the valve cover back on. So I got a lot of cleaning to do. So just kick back, relax, and I'll come back once it's clean. Okay, so uh, we have our gasket onto our valve cover. Now you have two little tabs, one there and one there. That will help you lay it out and actually get it lined up. So everything on here is ready to go. It, uh, it's in there, it could fall out, but it's in there pretty good. We got all three tabs like we have already done. We'll put that to the side. Now, we need to change out all these little grommets. Now these things are hard as a rock. There's no way that thing's going to seal. So we need to get these off. We still need to re reuse the hardware, but we need to get the grommets off. All right, so in order to take them off, you can just take this here, and you don't need this anymore. You're gonna get rid of those. All right, so if it doesn't come off, go hog wild. Grab yourself some clips and just mangle it if you have to. There you go. That's off. This should come right off. So now I have two that are ready to go. Just got a few more to go. All right, so I got them all off. And what I'll probably do is just hit this on the wire brush real quick just to clean them up. Because we're here. Might as well. All right. So we have all of them off. They're all cleaned off, nice and pretty. So we're gonna take our new O-rings and we're gonna be able, we need to get those on here. So what we could do, if I can get all of it, put a little bit of lube, just a little Vaseline will do you. Just a dab will do you. Just like that, bam. Do that for every one of them. All right, so I got the head valve cover back on. I uh, have all my little grommets all lined up. Now I have my socket. Now I'm not going to put a wrench on it right now or a ratchet because I want to make sure that they're all tight by hand. So look up in your owner's manual or your repair manual and actually figure out which is your torque settings. Now I usually try to start in the middle and work my way around to be able to get this actually cinch on uh, really well. Make sure that all of your spark plug holes are actually lined up and coming through and then Go ahead and torque them down to the specified torque settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. Uh, then we're gonna start on the back. Um, I still haven't even taken this one off yet, uh, only because I wanted to get the front done because I didn't want to leave this open if I didn't have to. So I'm gonna start with the front, then I'll work on the back. All right, valve cover is on. And I went ahead and put the uh, coil packs back in just to be able to uh, fill in those holes. I didn't want anything to fall down in there. But, man, that looks nice. Look at that. If you have time to clean it, go ahead and clean it. It just makes it look like you got new, uh, freshly cleaned. Dirty nasty. Freshly clean, dirty nasty. We're going to clean that up once we get that, uh, that valve cover off. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of the electrical stuff that is sitting on top. We're going to pull that over. Hopefully, it should be able to bring over to the side. And then we should be able to get that cover back off. So, let's do that.